this entitled parent thinks she can enslave whoever she wants to make them her butler. But how will she react when people say the magic word? No. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. Okay, let me tell you what happened on my first ever shift working at the theater. I think it was the first day, or it was the second, one of the two. I just know I was brand new. Players are me, co-worker, random customer, frick you lady I'm not your butler Karen, manager, the boss man. I'm working concession and I'm the runner. The runner is the person who grabs the food and drinks while the person on till takes the order and money. So we get this big order, popcorn, nachos, drinks and whatever else. Co-worker, it'll be this much. Cool, can I have a box to put it in? Sure. I grab a flat box and assemble it so he can put this stuff in, but he can't put everything in there. Do you need help, sir? Yes, I do. Hey, can you help him with this stuff? We're not that busy anyways. I grab the rest of the stuff and help the random customer go into his theater. We walk inside and he is second row. He grabs the stuff from me and thanks me. I'm about to leave until Karen stops me. Excuse me, young man. Yes, can I help you? Can you get me a refill of Coke, please? This is when you were allowed refills on large drinks. Sure. I grab the large cup and go back to concession. Refill it with Coke and go back to give it to her. Thank you. Also, I need something else. Can you grab me some nachos and another large popcorn? Here is 40. I want my change back, I know what it costs. I take the money and go back to concession. Silly me, I think I'm supposed to be doing this stuff because we want to please the customer. I go over to one of the co-workers and wait in line. There is only one person in front of me. The co-worker I was running for sees this and says, What the heck are you doing? Come back here and help me. I can't. A customer wants this and that. I have her money to buy it. The frick? So I get the stuff and I go back to give it to her. She was done? Nah, son. She wanted more. My kid would like another refill of coke. Thank goodness the movie hasn't started yet. So I go back to concession. The manager is there just steaming. So co-worker says you're getting food for a customer with their money? Why? I explain to him what happened. He quickly stops being mad and starts laughing a bit. Yeah, no, we don't do that. They had to do that themselves. Just get back to running. I start running again and one hour passes by. I hear a horrid scream come out of nowhere. Where the heck is my baby's drink, you jerk? I've been waiting an hour. I have to stay in concession, madam. I was told that was not my job. You do what the frick I say, you hear? You are my butler. Where the frick is the large cup? I threw it away. Karen does not like this and loses her mind. You gosh darn frick. You owe me a large drink. Get me one now or you're fired. I know the manager here. Boss man walks by because someone radioed him. Excuse me, can I help you? Who are you? Where's Billy? Who's Billy? The manager. Well, I'm the manager and there is no manager named Billy. Stop lying. I know him. He is the head of manager of this place. I want this guy fired for not getting my drink. The nerve of him. First off, the head GM is named Jeff. It was not. He just made some name up. Whatever. I want you to fire this degenerate. Are you the one who made him get stuff for you? Yes, he's my servant. You're all my servants. You all do what I want. Come with me, madam. Karen and boss man walk off to somewhere. No idea what happened next, but I kept running. End of the shift ends, and I ask boss man what happened to Karen. Turns out he went back into the theater with Karen, kicked her and her kids out, and got security to take out the back door. Also got banned. Nice. Technically, yes, the job of those people is to serve you, but it's in a very limited capacity. The way that you pay for their services is through the products you're buying. If you want them to be your personal servant, yeah, that's not in their job description, so it's gonna cost you extra. Bear with me here, the title will make sense. You'll seem to like my last story about Entitled Disney World guests, so strap in for round two. One day I was working with Baymax. He's a squishable, lovable robot. There's a performer inside the costume, of course, who often has problems. In short, the costume is a pain and malfunctions quite a bit. I understand how this can be an inconvenience to guests, but I digress. Anyways, on the day that Baymax had a super short line, around 4pm, there were no more than 5-6 to six families in line over a period of about an hour. So when Baymax gave me the distress signal, I was concerned for him. 
but at least relieved that I wouldn't be disappointing people who had waited for hours to see him. I informed the line that Baymax needed to recharge his batteries immediately and he'd be gone for 20 minutes at the very most. I told them they were welcome to wait if they'd like. Anyways, four of the families in line shrugged their shoulders and said they'd come back later and left. The family who was next in line was furious. The parents ranted about how they were next to meet Baymax, and they'd waited all this time to meet him, and that I could possibly keep them from getting just a quick picture. Entitled Mum and Dad tried to shove their kid past me. Keep in mind that I have no idea what's wrong with Baymax. He could be hurt, or sick, or something simply might be poking him in an uncomfortable way. I always treat distress signals as if they're life or death, because I have no idea what's going on. I stepped in front of the family, blocking them from Baymax while opening the door for Baymax to get back to the break room. I'm sorry folks, Baymax needs to recharge his batteries. It'll be 20 minutes max, you're welcome to wait. Entitled Mum goes off at me, saying that this is ridiculous treatment for a paying customer, and that she's going to go straight to the front of the park to lodge a complaint. I'm not supposed to tell guests anything that's not magical. When a character distresses, I make up a story relating to their movie to explain why they're leaving. However, sometimes I break those rules when it's an adult who I'm trying to reason with. I lowered my voice and turned away from the woman's young son, who was kind of staring off into the distance, not bothered at all by the fact that Baymax had to leave. I said, Ma'am, there's something wrong with Baymax. He might be hurt and I need to check on him. You know, trying to appeal to their human decency. But no, she still grabs her kid and tries to shove him at Baymax. Baymax smacks into me, hard. I move between the child and Baymax. It's clear to me that the camera that Baymax uses to see has cut out and he's blind. He's a big, blind marshmallow that will squish kids by accident and probably hurt himself in the process if I don't get him inside. I eventually was able to guide the blind marshmallow through the door while fending off the entitled parents. Baymax's camera was fixed in less than five minutes and he was back out meeting guests in a jiff. Entitled Mum and Dad come back shortly after Baymax returned, screaming about how it was going to be 20 minutes and demanding that I let them cut in line, which had two families in it. I refused and told them that they could either wait the two minutes it would take in line or they could leave. Entitled Mum made a big show about writing down my name. I told her to say hi to my supervisor for me and to have the most magical day ever. Like they acknowledge at the start, you can understand why a family would be pretty annoyed if they've been waiting in line. But it's like anything in life. Sometimes things happen that are out of your control that put you in a disadvantage. It's more important to take care of the safety of the person in the costume and for the safety of those around than the fact that you were waiting in line for so long. Yeah, it sucks, but if you came to a theme park and didn't expect something like this would eventually happen, you probably picked the wrong place to spend a day out with your family. So yesterday I went cycling, and in the city I live, the busiest areas have bike lanes and pedestrian lanes separated. However, EM didn't want to walk on the dirty lanes. Cast. EM, level 1 crook. CK, chill kid. Me, level 100 mafia boss. P, police officer. And M, my mum. So I was cycling back home on a bike lane, and I saw EM and CK in front of me. I rang the bell. What is your problem? Now, I have Asperger's, which means I'm pretty bad in human contact. I was ringing the bell because you are blocking... I don't care. I was here first. Sorry, but this is a bike lane. You should walk over there. I point to the pedestrian lane. No, we were here first. My little angel can't walk on those dirty lanes. The walkways were completely fine. The chill kid who was embarrassed. Mom, don't call me little angel, I'm 12. Don't worry, sweetie. You can play when we get home. What? No, Mom, we should go. Yes, sweetie, you can play Fortnite when we get home. Mom, no, gosh, you're embarrassing. I don't even play Fortnite. So if this is a bike lane, we must borrow your bike. I was confused. What? No. Yes, we must borrow it. We were here first. You can get another bike. Ian pushes me from my seat and tries to take the bike. I quickly put the lock on. It's a very easy to use lock. It takes seconds to lock. And take the key. Little did she know a police car was nearby. The cops see what's happening and arrive. What's happening? This brat stole my son's bike. CK looks really surprised and confused. Is this true? Looking at me. 
I'm in shock and I've never been in a police confrontation before, and I don't get a word out of my mouth. And before I do, this happens. No, it isn't my bike. Mum, let's go. EM whispers, Sweetie, you'll get a free bike. Just shush now. Yes, this is my bike. No, you're a liar. Now my mum arrives as I was cycling with her. Honey, what's going on? Your brat stole my son's bike. No, that's not true. I managed to lock it before EM started screaming. I have the key. Yeah, mum, you're embarrassing me. Ma'am, you can't steal people's bikes. She has done this before. How could you? No Fortnite this week. That's okay, I don't play Fortnite. You will come with me, ma'am. Looking at CK. Could you come to the station for a bit? Don't worry, we'll just ask some questions. Okay. EM looks really embarrassed. Luckily doesn't raise a scene anymore, just enters the car. I didn't press charges as it wasn't really an offense, but I'm pretty sure she got screwed after CK told about EM's other offenses. Or that's what I was told. So what's the obvious solution if someone's like, hey, get out of the bike lane? Would you just take their bike, of course? Entitled parents seem to be drawn to stealing bicycles and Nintendo Switches. Maybe they need the bike so that they have a faster getaway once they've stolen the Nintendo Switch. You see, it's all adding up. Hey, a voicey. I've been a fan for quite some time, so I've decided to share a story from my past. This is the first story I'm posting, so I hope I do it correctly. A bit of background knowledge. This story was a few years ago, around when I was maybe 9 or 10 years old. So I'll try and be as descriptive as much as I can be. The crew in this story, Entitled Mum, Entitled Mum's Kid, Me, the one and only, Mum, Dad, Waiter 1, Waiter 2, Sister 1, probably around 4 or 5, and Sister 2, 1 year old. So my parents have owned and worked at their restaurant for a while now. People say that being a chef or waitress is one of the hardest jobs ever, and if I'm being honest, that can be very true. So business was going well as usual. It was a bit busy due to some of the waiters being sick, so I decided to make some extra money and be a waitress. Everything was going well for the first few hours, but then walked in EM and K. EM was looking like some spoiled queen, with her big dress and huge earrings. But being a young kid, I thought, what could go wrong? I took them to their table and got two menus for them. Good evening, ma'am. I'll be your waitress tonight. Would you like anything to drink? The restaurant is popular near the area we are, and a bit small. It can hold 65 people at max. So sometimes the restaurant can get full from time to time, but usually people really don't care, and are fine with waiting. Um, yes, this place is too small. It looks like some old basement a drug deal owns. My parents know that the restaurant is small, and we also have a bar where they hold all of the wine and other stuff for the adults coming in, and wanting to sit at the bar. Mommy, mommy, I'm hungry. I was still standing there waiting for them to tell me what drink they wanted, but me being a young kid, there's almost no wait to anything. Well miss, I asked you about five minutes ago what you wanted for your drink and you said nothing. I was still trying to be polite, but there were more people coming in. There was a party of about 12 people coming in later, and I was supposed to help within about 30 minutes at that time, so I had to be quick with this table. I want beer right now! Remember when I said I was a little kid at the time? Well, my parents had a few rules that I could never break when being a waitress. One of those rules included was no getting beer until you're old enough. The other two waitresses were busy with the other tables, and the kitchen was really busy with my parents and the other two chefs going crazy. So this was a problem, and where the big conflict started. I'm sorry ma'am, but if you can't tell, I'm still a kid. I'm not allowed to touch beer or anything like that. I could get you a water or soda by any chance. I want my beer now! I repeated to her that I was strictly not allowed to touch stuff like that, but she just kept going. Ten minutes passed and EM gives up. Fine, give me some Coca-Cola or something. I want some milk, please. I got their milk and soda. I apparently see EM talking to Sister One. I wondered what she wanted, so I came over, gave them their drinks, and asked what the problem was. Before I gave them their drinks, I see S1 walking over to the bar and trying to reach the wine. Worst of all, she was just trying to go and grab it off the shelves. I go rush over to get my sister and put her on the table she was sitting at. I whisper in her ear to not listen to that lady. Luckily she understood. Hey, what's the big deal? I'm sorry ma'am, but I already told you. We are too young to get you your beer. I was over here trying to be polite and hold it in. I just wanted some beer, what's your problem? Waiter one walks over. Is there a problem here? I see you guys are fighting over what exactly? I just wanted some beer, and this little kid won't get it for me. 
Now waiter one goes over and gets my mum and dad. I tell my parents everything. Excuse me miss, but my child has already told you to stop asking her to get you beer. She is too young and is absolutely not allowed to touch stuff like that. If you continue to try and push my children around to get you things for you, you'll be kicked out and banned from this business. Now my parents have to deal with crap like this almost at least once a day. So they pretty much know what to do in situations like these. Mom, I'm still hungry. Please, can we just get some food? In comes the party of 12. EM and K have been sitting here, and they haven't even tried to place an order. Waiter 1 and 2 go over and seat the party. Business cooled down a little bit, so they were a bit more free. If I can't have my beer, then I'll sue you and take this place as my own. Now I knew this lady was crazy, so I didn't believe her. Mommy, I want some food, please. You're making me starve. S2 starts crying over the noise as one goes over and starts playing on her tablet, hoping to entertain S2. It did help and she stopped crying. I go over to my parents and ask them if I can have some ravioli, 10 to be exact, and gave it to the kid on the house. I saw EM try and take some, but at this point I honestly didn't care. I was done with her random crap about taking the business. My parents were okay with me giving my ravioli to the kid, he deserved it. So yeah, that's pretty much my story. My parents have banned her from our business and we never saw EM again. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.